Hey, this is Mike. I am in Whiteville, North Carolina, which is close to Wilmington, North Carolina, and I'm visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, the nicest Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram dealership in southeastern United States, as far as I'm concerned. But anyways, here is a 2015 Dodge Dart SE with the rally package, and I'm checking out the laser blue color i mean it's just striking as soon as I, I i showed up this is the very first vehicle i wanted to look at that laser blue with the combination of the smoked out gray glossy wheels aluminum wheels 17 inch aluminum wheels is just a really killer combination and the dodge dart is one of those cars where it has a lot of room on the inside but it has a certain amount of style to it that you just don't get in any other vehicle. It just has its own style. And with the 2.0 160 horsepower Tiger Shark engine with the six speed Powertech transmission, you get really good gas mileage too. So let's go ahead and check it out. Here in the front, you can see it has the, the blacked out grille which adds to the sportiness. And the projector headlights here, it has a combination of the projector headlight and the reflector headlight. And the projector headlight um, at nighttime really gives you a real focused beam. Uh, basically, it gives you a real focused beam like it doesn't, I don't know if you've seen in any of my nighttime videos, it really puts the light where you want it and it doesn't really scatter around too much so that real focused projector beam uh, lens is excellent upgrade on headlight technology as far as I'm concerned so it's powered by halogen bulbs and then you have the head the high beams here which is more of a floodlight and that's why it's a reflector that way it's able to you know put more light out in, the, in a broader area Alright, so let's take a look over here. Alright, so let's go ahead and look on the passenger side. This one has all black interior with the textured cloth here on the side where your arm goes. This is soft, Every pretty much everything soft to the touch here. You have a little place to put something small, a place to put a bottle. And then you've got that storage area there that goes in pretty far. And I like the way the door is dished out to give you that extra arm room when you're uh, sitting in the vehicle. Plus the contouring of the dashboard and plenty of leg room in this vehicle. The seats are bolstered and then you have that textured cloth here on the seat just like the door. And I don't know if you can see that textured cloth really uh, grips you in the seat and so you're not sliding around too much and it kind of lets you ble breathe a little bit because of the it kind of simulates the perforations in like say the perforated leather or something I'm not sure how to explain it but kind of helps you breathe and, and you know especially on a hot day you can sit in the seat and um, it's you know you, it's not going to be like searing hot and burning <laughs> burning yourself or anything like that Okay, so the manual adjustments on the seat are on both sides, and you've got the, the tilt and then forward and back, but also you have this one, and this is for raising and lowering the seat. So you can raise it up or lower it uh, to the position that you want. And I like it a little bit far off the floor, so this one already has a decent amount of space off the floor to get that, you know, that leg comfort so your knees aren't sticking up. But also, the depth of the legs, the leg room, is very substantial in a car of this size. Plus you have this little pocket here so when you get in you can, my cell phone's a little bit too big for that pocket but maybe a smaller cell phone can fit in there. Now speaking about, speaking of huge, the glove compartment is crazy uh, how much room it's in there. I can barely, I can't even reach the back of it. Hold on, let me show you, I gotta show you this. Let me get all these papers out of the way. Let me turn night vision on. Look at that. I mean, seriously. 
that's crazy. You can't reach back there hardly. You're probably gonna lose stuff, but you have, I mean, you can like put a whole book in there. I mean, you could put your whole books in there from if you're in college or something. It's amazing how big the glove compartment is. That's really, uh, they dominate on that level. Plus you put a place for your pencil, stuff like that. And also for quick access stuff. So like my, you know, like a cell phone or something, you can put it right here in that, that area and close it. And when you open it up, it doesn't go down in that deeper pocket. It, it keeps it here close in the front. So it's a, uh, it's one of the vehicles where actually the glove compartment is a, a topic for discussion for sure. Okay, so let's continue on to the back here. And that front seat is just about all the way back and you can see it's, it's a decent amount of leg room. It's not like, um, it's not like a huge amount. So let me go ahead and hop in just so you can get an idea because I'm six feet tall. So with that seat all the way back, my knees are just barely touching. They are touching the back of the seat. So, um, but the seat's soft, so it's not a big deal. But the stack, but the actual seat I'm sitting in is very comfortable, and it's not a. Uh, it kind of leans back a little bit. It's easier on the back. It kind of relieves your stress on your back, so it's really comfortable back here. Plus, I have that that arm space here to rest my arm. I got a place to put something there, wallet or keys or whatever. And the headroom is. I mean, my head's not touching the touching the, uh, the ceiling or anything, so it's pretty good. All right, so let me get out. Plus, you can put these seats down, so let me show you that. When I say seats, the whole thing is one big uh, one-piece seat, and with that seat, if that seat was more forward, then it will go all the way flat and it gives you basically over doubling your cargo capacity by putting that seat down which is handy as long as you don't have any passengers here in the back you can really go to lowe's or somewhere and pick up a you know huge box and fit it in there so let's take a look in here this is your fuel door it's on the passenger side and so basically uh, it is a flex fuel vehicle, so you can use up to 85% ethanol in this vehicle and it'll still run. But you take the cap off, it's tethered by this little piece of plastic, and it has this perfect little place to put that. I'm not going to take the cap off because it's running, but the cap, uh, that little tether right there, will rest in this little spot and hang the cap away from your vehicle so it doesn't you know, flop down and scratch your paint and stuff like that. Right. So here's the back of the vehicle, and it has that signature Dodge tail light back here. You'll see that in the uh, the new Charger. You'll see that in the uh, Durango. But it looks really cool at night, which you got to check out my night videos. But anyways, let me go ahead and show you where the button is to open up that trunk. It is on the key as well, which uh get to in a minute so push the button and you can see it pops all the way open so even when your hands are full you just push the button it flops right open so you can access the back and for the size vehicle this is the trunk size is um, kind of surprising how big it is especially when it goes back up in there and then you can lower the seats to even have more cargo space okay so let's look under here because I want to show you this is one of those vehicles that do not, it does not come with a spare tire from the factory. It comes with a tire inflator kit. And, you know, that's something that you want to pay attention because because some vehicles do not come with a spare tire. It is an option. So if you wanted a spare tire, it's no problem. Uh, you know, the dealer here can put one in it for you. But, you know, from the factory, because they're trying to you know get better gas mileage they just cuz they just take out the spare tire I mean the way tire technology is now you rarely get a flat tire and when you do uh, a tire inflator kit can get you back 
going, usually. Okay, so let's take a look under the hood. Check out that 2.0 liter. Four cylinder with the VVT system. If you're not familiar with VVT, it is a really good, actually amazing, modern engine technology that allows you to get really good gas mileage at the same time keeping your horsepower and torque up. So unfortunately it's covered up with plastic for the most part. We're just going to see some things down here. You can see it does have a insulated battery. Everything's color coded. I don't know if you notice the yellow there. But all the stuff that you check yourself is color coded with this yellow um, if you get color yellow. So you check your oil, your brake fluid, your moisture washer fluid, stuff like that. And then you crop it and it's yellow. But anyways, the VVT system is able to, on the fly, while you're driving, adjust the timing, the valve height, and all this stuff to give you the optimal fuel economy and at the same time the, um, the torque and horsepower that you need in that moment. And also, I have a video uh, just check, search my channel, ask the engineer student, or what is VVT, and Matt Gore is the expert on that video that explains what it is and how it works. Alright, so let's take a look on the inside in a little bit more detail. So here's the key, and so the Dodge Dart has this plastic box and then this little square part here to actually, that's, that's actually what you use as a key. Now there is a real key on the inside. Um, this will slide up, that'll slide over. I can't really do it one handed, but it will slide out and there's actual key there in case the battery goes bad, you can actually use that to unlock the vehicle. But once you get in the vehicle, all you have to do is put this in here, this little square place. And just like a regular key, um, you just start it up. Okay, so let's take a look here. Plenty of leg room. I mean, my, I can stick my leg completely straight back here. Plus, it has a place to put my leg, uh, my foot there, rest my foot, and then you have the pedals there. So it's a it's a comfortable vehicle, and the seats are very comfortable, and the leg room is is more than expected in a vehicle this size. Okay, so. Take a look at it. it. Has that red accent with the black dash that wraps around. Okay, so let's take a look at the driver's door. So you have your door lock controls here, and your power windows are here, and the driver's side, just the driver's window, is powered down. It's powered down, but you still have to hold it to lift it up as a safety feature. You can lock out all the power windows with this button here so if you don't want kids rolling up and down the window you can push that button and it'll lock them out or lock them from lock out the windows from being rolled up and down the side mirrors are adjusted with this this system here left and right you just pick the side and you adjust it with this little pad right here over here we have the headlight controls which is fairly basic you have an off position then you have your uh, parking lights and then uh, your headlights on and this is for your interior lights. Uh, you can, your dash lights, you can dim it to where it's not very bright or whatever. But then if you lift up all the way, it turns on your interior lights. Okay, so the steering wheel is a synthetic. It kind of has a texture similar to leather uh, for gripping. But it is a synthetic steering wheel, which is last forever, very durable type steering wheel. And it has a very good thickness to it. Some steering wheels are a little bit too thin and it kind of digs in your hand while you're on, you know, you're gripping the steering wheel while you're driving. So this one has a very good stick, thickness, plus it gives a little bit. You can kind of push it and it has a little bit of softness. So that's another thing that adds to the comfort of the steering wheel. And these bolsters here on the side give you that extra, um, you know, lateral control there and a sportier look, in, you know, in my opinion. So here on the right, we have the cruise control buttons. You just have to make sure it's on. So on and off there. 
and it'll tell you with this little indicator the whether the cruise is on or off and once it's on you can set it with this button and you can change it through your speeds with these and then you can cancel it there so on the left side is your Bluetooth and your voice recognition so once you pair your Bluetooth phone with the system you can answer calls or make calls by pushing this button here and this one your voice recognition you can make calls with that but you can also change to the stations like change to a different you know whatever 104.1 FM something like that and it'll change to the station so these are really good convenience features but more importantly they are extremely good safety features because they keep your eyes on the road hands on the wheel while you're staying productive and we all have to stay productive make calls receive calls stuff like that so instead of fumbling around with your phone uh, the Bluetooth system and the voice recognition system is imperative to the safety of driving while you know I mean it's just like a it's just one of the best things ever in new vehicles for saving lives I think so okay so these up these buttons here I'll show you in just a second I just want to mention one thing and on the back of the steering wheel you see these buttons these are toggle it's like a toggle button and on the right side is your volume as a up and down as a up and down so I can turn the volume up and down here and then it has a center button and the center button cycles through AM or FM so you can push it, it goes to AM push it again it goes to FM so I'm gonna turn the volume down now on the left side of the steering wheel same thing same button but the up and down goes to your presets on your radio so you have you know your different presets it can cycle through them and then the center button I'm sorry the center button cycles through the presets the up and down cycles through the stations like so it's so, so kind of like your tuning knob so that's another safety feature that you're able to use your radio while keeping your hands on the wheel very very good job okay so back to these buttons here so this corresponds with this little screen uh, between the gauges now looking at the gauges you have this red and white background popping through the black which is super awesome to me and the the font used on the lettering and stuff like that and the numbers is just uh, it just really cool it gives you that feeling of you're in a, a Dodge performance type car I mean I know this isn't a race car or anything but it gives you that you know rally sporty look to it so the RPMs there on the left and then your speedometer is there on the right your gas gauge is there on the in the center and your your temperature but right here you see the little gas pump and it has an arrow to the right that's telling you which side your gas pump is on so no sense in looking in your rearview mirrors trying to figure out which side is on your, your your gas door um, because it's telling you hey it's on the passenger side you're good to go you already know just about at a glance so what I was getting at over here with these buttons on the steering wheel is the center screen so right now it's showing a digital speedometer but you can get more information there so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of use the up arrow and scroll up so right now we're in the trip sorry about that trip screen and I'm gonna push the other arrow which is the right and it's gonna scroll through A and B the different trips it gives you the mileage and it gives you the time of that trip I'm gonna scroll up it's going to how many miles till I need gas scroll up again average miles per gallon I can I can reset that and, and start over and see what I'm getting on a particular trip or whatever scrolling up again gives me my current miles per gallon so as I'm driving a little bar will pop up there and start going across uh, the, those numbers and give you what you're getting in that very moment in in gas mileage so if you really want to focus on what the most optimal speed let's say you set the cruise control at 65 or 70 um, you can adjust fine-tune your speed to get to where you're getting a, a, a significantly more gas mileage just by fine-tuning your your um, your speed now I've heard that in other vehicles especially the eco diesel where there's just like this sweet spot where you're driving it just all of a sudden goes up massively in miles per gallon so that's a really cool feature 
going up again, um, this would be stored messages. So like say, if it pops up while you start the vehicle and it says time to change the oil, or if you got a turn signal out, or any kind of message that it pops up, it'll eventually go away. But it'll be stored here, so you can always go back in there and say, well, what did that say? I was in a hurry earlier, I didn't have time to look at it. But it will store their messages in here. And this is showing your oil life, you know, when it's time to change your oil. And so, I mean, these like that, it's going to alert you anyway. You don't have to constantly check it. And then you can go into settings and you can, you know, change your uh, miles per gallon, um, you know, like say uh, miles per hour to kilometers per hour, stuff like that. And then it has the digital temperature of outside temperature. And then your odometer there. And it scrolls back to your speedometer. So you get a lot of, it's a small screen, but you get a lot of information just by scrolling. And it's real simple. It's just up, 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 up. You just keep going up. And then if you find something that you need to go into more detail, you just go to the right. All right. So let's look over here. And I, got, and I was talking about that, that black with the red background. It's really enhances the, le you know, the, just the overall look of the vehicle to me. So here's the radio, and this one has the, you know, the basic radio in it. This is about as basic as you can, this is the most basic radio you can get. And, which is still good, because the way, the way radios are now, like say this one has a CD player, which is pretty much obsolete now. You can play music through a Bluetooth phone, you can play music through an auxiliary input, plus you can play music through a USB drive. So you can pretty much play music in lots of different ways through the sound system and you know so the, the, all the bells and whistles are not necessary unless you want like navigation or something like that if you just want a basic radio I mean basic nowadays is pretty darn advanced so you know AM FM is chosen here you can go to your CD player here if you if you have a disc in there you can play it um, there's your you can have your time displayed by pushing time and then the information, if there's any information to display, like say if you were to have a CD, tr a certain CD track and then the name of the song will show up there. But since there's no information, it just says no info. Your presets are down here. And so let's go down here, the volume button. Uh, you can play and pause, change to the tracks. You can adjust your audio, like your bass, your mid-range and your treble, and your balance and fade. And then you have this menu button and the back button. Now pushing the menu button will pop up one of three screens. Your audio, which is basically your, um, your bass, mid-range, treble, and balance. Um, that's basically what you get here. But also you can cycle through using this side to clock. You can change your clock, set your, you know, adjust your clock. You can go to system information, uh, which will give you your software version and your a serial number in there and then you use the back button to get out of that so the menu system this menu is not a real advanced menu it's not something you necessarily go into all the time the audio is something you might want to adjust regularly and this there's a, a separate button for that okay so let's look at the climate control you do have the before I get to the climate control your four-way flashers emergency flashers and your trash control is here and you that is always on so the only this is the button to turn this is the off button. This is the, one of the few times where you actually have an off button. So the off button there on the trash control is only for you don't never really want to turn it off unless you are stuck and you need to spin tires or something like that um, because it is a very good safety feature. It keeps you from spinning out and you know get losing control of the vehicle. So maintaining traction. That's the name. Hence the name traction control. Okay. So your fan speed is here. And I'm tempted to turn it wide open because it's really hot today. And then your temperature, where you want the air to blow. Recirculating the air. This is a really good feature. Um, not only for continuously cooling the same air so you actually get colder air. But it also keeps outside air in. So like say if there's odors outside and you just don't want them to come in your vehicle. Let's say there's a, a truck in front of you that's bellowing out smoke which happened to me a few days ago. And so you can push that button if it's not already on and it keeps that outside air and smoke and odors and all that stuff out of your vehicle. So kind of multi-function there, not, but you know, also the main thing is to recirculate the air to get colder air. 
12 volt power supply down there and you do have a pretty significant um, place to put stuff in here and then you have a little place on the side there for small stuff so let's take a look at this with my cell phone in place yeah I think that would be probably there or the cup holder here for my cell phone which I have a pretty good size cell phone so but anyways that's a really good you know place to put stuff you always have stuff in your hands when you get in a vehicle and you want to just, you need to set it down so you know it's good to have places in the door there in the center to just kind of put stuff so here is the shifter for the six-speed automatic transmission and um, so it's real simple it has a sporty boot too kind of makes it look like a manual in a way so let's go ahead and cycle back here's reverse there's neutral and then there's drive and when you're in drive this is just normal drive position you're just driving around it cycles through the gears normally but if you need to actually change gears you just push it over here and you'll see this plus and minus light up and plus like more, the higher gear is pulling back and lower gear is pushing forward and you'll know what gear you're in because it'll show here so I can cycle through I don't know if you can see that one and two um, it's not going to go too far out of range so I'm keep on I'm bumping it but it's not gonna let me keep on going it's gonna keep me within a reasonable gear ratio to avoid messing up the engine and transmission for your benefit so but it does give you some level of controlling the gear ratio of the vehicle especially handy going down hills you need some engine braking you know just use that feature it's real simple just bump it over there and then you can you can cycle it however you want all right parking brake is here pretty standard there's the cup holders and they have these little rubber um, bubble type bumps here that kind of take up the slack on different size cups so that way it um, keeps it snug okay so here's the center armrest and this lifts up and you have a storage pocket but this is where the USB and the auxiliary inputs are um, and you can use the USB for charging you can use it for playing through the music music through the sound system and the auxiliary input you can pretty much put anything in there I mean there's all kinds of different things that actually you know that have that little I think it's a three and a half millimeter um, audio jack they can plug in there and you can play music on just about anything plus you can see this little groove here that's a place for the wires to go in and out of this little cubby that way it doesn't squish your wires um, exiting the little cubby okay so let's look up here here's the rearview mirror and it has this day and night mode manually right here and then you have up here you know this these little bumps you're probably wondering what those are those are your microphones for your Bluetooth uh, Bluetooth system so when you're talking to somebody on the phone that's actually where the microphones are and it's out of the way like even if you had the windows down um, it's it's a it has little windscreens on it to where it doesn't really interfere interfere and I've talked to people uh, uh, using that system and they they can't tell really that it's going through the car even if I'm driving also um, you know I've talked to people while they're driving and you can't tell so anyway that's the, the little microphone so if you, you know you don't want to cover those up and you know cause uh, problems with you know somebody hearing you or whatever and if you need a tap a real quick reading lights or something to you know quickly look at something at nighttime you got these tap lights here in the center and there's your visor it has a little mirror in it same thing on the other side so let's take out take a look at the visibility back here because it's pretty good the headrests are a little bit in the way but I mean that's to be expected All right, so what do you think? What do you think about the 2015 Dodge Dart SE? Have you ever driven one? Taken one for a test drive? Are you considering buying one? Do you own one? If you own one, please leave your, leave your, your feedback. Give us, give us some information on how you, how you like it. Um, what made, you know, what other vehicles maybe you considered when you chose this vehicle and why you chose it and your experience and all that stuff that would really 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 help out people that are shopping for this vehicle 
So, and if you're, you know, just any kind of comments, please leave it in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I'll do my best. I get a lot of, a lot of uh, comments, so if I'll do my best to try to answer them. And, of course, you know, there's lots of experts out there that will chime in and kind of help you out with certain questions than I, that I am incapable of answering. So, anyways, um, I'm going to leave. Stephen Underwood is my contact here. So, I know Stephen. I know Van. There's lots of people here that I know and uh because i worked here for over two, two years so this is a really uh this is one of them dealerships that's really part of like family to me but i'll leave steven's contact information in the description and he, he anywhere pretty much in north south carolina virginia pretty much all around the southeastern united states if you're interested in a vehicle they can deliver it to your house literally and you could all it takes is an email to get started so you know and they're really like van and steven are really really easy to get along with they'll bend over backwards um to accommodate for you and and they really want to earn your business so i'll leave their contact information in the description i do not work for van underwood i used to but um, i'm here to show off this awesome car to you and luckily they're allowing me to do that so anyways i appreciate you watching and thank you to van underwood chrysler jeep dodge ram in whiteville north carolina for allowing me to check out this awesome car, and I'll see you next time.